Hey man, what it is? This is Dean, and I am your host, and this is by any means. There go to the Cash App, dollar sign Dean by any means. There go to the PayPal at Dean by any means. I want to say this because I didn't get a chance to say it yesterday. I had a lot going on, but happy birthday to one of the most amazing men that ever walked this earth, Mr. Malcolm X, the guy y'all see right there on y'all screen. His birthday was yesterday. So um just want to say um, rest in peace to the big dog, man. Appreciate everything that you've done for us as a people and um, selfishly myself. Um, all your speeches and, and things that you've done that I've read on, you know, my, my parents had me read the autobiography of Malcolm X at 10 years old. I was an exceptional reader. So um, he's done a lot for my life to change my mindset. And, and, and uh, even when I was in the streets and doing things I ain't need to do, I still always could hear my parents and my grandparents and his voice and not just him, a bunch of others, you know, in my head about doing the right or wrong thing. So rest in peace to the GOAT. Malcolm X, much appreciated. Let's talk of Philly. We is in the building. July 13th, we got Boots versus Cody Crowley. Let's cook. Wells Fargo. Do y'all know how big this is for Boots to have a, a, a major fight at where the Sixers play at? Do y'all know that that fight is basically sold out? Dean will be in attendance. Shout out. Dean will be in attendance. Y'all already know. Um. Just want to say, man, I'm proud of the boots, man. Bringing boxing back to Philly, where it's supposed to be the home of boxing, the home of man. We the only city that got our own style, man. Stop playing with me, man. We the only city in America that got our own style, man. Y'all already know what it is. You hear what I'm saying? And, and, and why I'm so excited is because growing up down the bottom, y'all, that's where I grew up at in West Philadelphia. I ain't had no brothers or nothing like that to run to. You understand? So. This persona and this passion that y'all see from me, man, this is something that I had to gain from not being punk, from having to grow up in one of the worst neighborhoods in America, I, I would say. You feel what I'm saying? And always being able to stand on business. And my mom made sure I I, I knew how to handle myself because she's somebody that's a woman. She didn't pull hair. She didn't do all that. She threw hands. You understand? And that made me fall in love with boxing. So I understand boots because I just understand where we come from and I understand the circumstances and, and, and just everybody in Philly think they tough, y'all. I swear to God, everybody in Philadelphia thinks they tough. I'm just being honest with y'all. But let's get into the fight, man. Cody Crowley is a dog. Let me start off by saying that the Canadian Southpaw, man, he's undefeated. Uh, Cody Crowley is a dog. Jerron Boutinis is a dog. Straight out of Philadelphia, y'all already know. And um, I'm just very excited to see this fight. Now, let's break it down from a technical aspect. The reason why I don't think Cody Crowley can beat Jerron Ennis, it comes down to two things, and literally two things. Um, one is a criteria and how you score boxing, and one is the attribute. It's going to come down to speed, and it's going to come down to defense. And from the things that I've seen from Cody Crowley, I've seen Cody Crowley hurt, and I've seen that Cody Crowley is, is – um, I've seen him be exposed as far as he's not that good at protecting his body. And what I mean by that is the uppercuts to the body, the hooks to the body, and especially against somebody like Jerron Ennis that has a little more whip, a little more – accuracy a little bit more crispness on his punches i think if jerron ennis attacks that body early and often this fight won't go to distance i could see jerron ennis getting him out of there around round nine round ten similar to what he did to um Romy and vila and um it just comes down to that i think that cody crowley has to be more patient than he is cody crowley is a very aggressive fighter and he a puncher he could punch you hear what i'm saying um He's not the biggest puncher, but he's he. When you see him fight, he punched with bad intentions at all times, and um, he's a very aggressive fighter, and he's 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 good in between shots. So when people are exchanging, Cody Crowley is he seems to excel at that, especially when he gets you against the ropes or you got bad position or something like that. He's going to have to be a little bit more patient and use his timing to get boots boots to have boots in there guessing if he can have boots in there guessing this fight gonna go to distance and boots have a fight on his hand but it would take him being patient it would take him using his jab and not so much his aggressive style that he normally does this is where your iq comes into play 
we're going to see how high Cody Crowley IQ is because if he tries to do what he normally does, he's going to get knocked out. I don't faith. I don't have faith that he's not going to try to do what he normally does. I think he's falling into boots um, plan as far as with the trainer, the talking, everything like that. I think Cody Crowley feel like he has something to prove. But sometimes when you have stuff to prove, you you stop thinking and you get careless. And Jerron Boots Ennis is not a fighter that you can get careless against because Jerron Ennis kind of excels. The only thing you can say about Boots is his ring generalship. That's the only thing I have ever seen in Boots' game that was like, ah, he could get a little bit better than that. And we saw that at his fight on the undercard of Jerronte Davis. I forget, was that Jerronte Davis and Roley or something? I forget what undercard he was on. But that's the only time I've seen him. Um, I'm sorry, y'all, something in my eye. That's the only time that I've seen him actually not look as a pre as impressive as he normally does. The thing is, though, watching him against Romy and Vila, I feel as though that Boots understands that. One thing about Jerron Ennis that I know is that he stays in that gym. He stays, he's a humble kid. He's very coachable. And I know that Boozy, I trust Boozy just as a trainer, just as a father. I just trust his game plan and him being honest with his son. See, that's the problem. I think that's the biggest difference between Boozy and a Depp and a Bill Haney is that I know that Boozy be, um, is honest with his son about things that he sees. I mean, it's not hard to see. And if you're being honest with somebody, hey, son, look, you got to do a better job at closing that ring off. Don't let them get away from you. When you see that they, they when you see that they retreating and they don't really want that smoke, you got to make sure that you put them in that. Um, you ever try to catch, it's the reason why, Y'all ever watch Rocky? What they was working on in Rocky with him catching the chicken, not only is agility and hand-eye coordination and things like that, but it's cutting off the ring, ring generalship. Understanding that the chicken, go to where the chicken is going. Don't chase after the chicken. Go where the chicken is going. That's the only way you're going to be able to capture him because he's going to be trying to square him out of there, going left and right. You're going to have to outthink him. And that's the way you use good ring generalship. You got to have the footwork. Well, Boots definitely has the footwork to be one of the best boxers in boxing when it comes to that, that criteria. So I really just see this fight coming down to uh, Boots counterpunching because Boots can fight either style. So when Cody Crowley is a natural southpaw, Boots is not a natural southpaw, but the part that Boots is so gifted at, that Boots fights better than most people who switch hit. Boots switch hit in between rounds. Boots don't look too much different being a southpaw or being orthodox. And that's where he's going to cause problems because I think that if Boots is smart, he's going to attack that body early and he's going to switch hitting throughout rounds. A minute into the round, he's going to switch up what he's doing and to keep Cody Crowley guessing because Cody Crowley is a fighter that when he's very aggressive. And he and, and and he's and he's not he's not wild with it. A lot of fighters they wild with it. Cody Crowley is not wild with it. He's he's methodical in what he's trying to do. The difference is he leaves himself open a little too much, and those are things that I notice. And it's the, that's going to be the major reason why he can't beat Jerron. The speed, because Cody Crowley he excels at punching and exchanges. The problem is Jerron Ennis excels at that too. And he's a little better at it. And he's more agile as far as his defense. Jerron and his the compare their defense is not even close. So the speed and the defense, I think, is going to be the two biggest attributes. Remember, Dean told y'all this. That's going to be the two biggest things where you're going to see Jerron in his punch getting there before Crowley's punch get there. And it's going to constantly throw Crowley's timing off constantly where he's not going to never feel comfortable in the fight ever. And then that's going to be where Boots is going to start excelling and breaking him down. But what I need Jerron Ennis to do, because I saw the flaw in Cody Crowley, he has to attack that body. Cody Crowley don't like you going to that body, and he doesn't protect it that, that well. He's not the guy that you just want to head hunt and he the guy you want to go hook, jab, body, then come upstairs with an upper uppercut or a right or left hook. That's how you want to break him down. Because if you go out there head hunting the whole time, Cody will move his head a little bit, start inching closer towards you because he doesn't lunge his shots. That's the thing I like about Cody Crowley. What we saw Della Santos do 
Cody Crowley don't do that. Cody Crowley uses his touch jab to feel where you at. Then when he know he got you, that's when he starts unloading. And I know that Jerron Ennis going to side swipe, make him dance. He's going to dance around the ring. He's not going to. He's not going to be a, a standstill target. So, y'all, I'm very. I'm looking forward to this fight, man. Philly in the building, y'all. I'm talking about all that boots, not a star, and all of that stuff. Well, I don't know about all that because all I know is the man fight is is already going. The man fight going to be sold out two months before it's time for him to fight. That fight is in July and it's almost sold out right now, y'all. And I'm talking from personal experience. It's almost sold out right now. So whatever y'all think, all I know is if you put boots anywhere on this East Coast, he going to sell out. So y'all know what this is, man. Deem by any means. And I'll holler at y'all.